Hey programmers, welcome back. Now that you know the basics of functions, let's actually put our knowledge to the test. So here I have another exercise, of course. So what you want to do is definitely pause this video, go to the link in the description, give this exercise a shot on your own. If you get stuck, come back to this walkthrough and we'll step through everything together. And so looking at part zero of this exercise, what I want to do is just practice reading different functions and predicting what they print out. Select instruction say, I'll go ahead and create myself a nice folder, a functions exercise. So looking at these part zero exercises, I need to create separate files for each of these snippets. So I'll go ahead and paste in the first one. So I'll pop in this code and here it is. And what I want to do is not run the code yet. I want to have an expectation and then check my guess by actually uh, running the code. So let's go ahead and step through this one. So a few things I see from the get inside of this file, right? I have two different functions. And so if I look at the greet function, it just prints out, hey, programmers. If I look at the whistle function, it just prints out, doot. Since greet and whistle are functions, they actually don't execute until we call them, right? So as JavaScript evaluates this file, it's gonna go top down and it doesn't print anything as it reads these function definitions, right? When it reads a function definition, it's just going to remember what that function should do when we call it later on. So really the first thing that happens is us console logging first. So that should be printed out first, of course, and then second, and then we make our first call to greet. At that point, when we hop inside of greet, we should go inside of the code, hit hey, and then programmers. And once we finish all the code inside of greet, then we jump out of the greet function and go back to where we called it, right? So, so far, the order of things is going to be first, second, hey, programmers, and then we jump back to where we called it, we print out third, fourth, then we call the whistle function, which means we print out do, and then we're done. To run this, I'll make sure I'll have my terminal right next to the snippet zero one. And then from there, what I wanna do is just run this file using node. Cool, and there we have it. So bear in mind, uh, when we call functions, we're gonna jump our execution to different lines of code, right? In particular, when I call a function, that means I jump to the code inside of that function. And once I'm done running the code inside of a function, I jump back to where I called it. So let's work on number two over here. And of course, I'll create another file for this. And so let's step through this one. So the first thing I have at the top is a function definition called how many, and it just returns the number 42. It doesn't do anything much, it doesn't console.log inside, but it does return a value. And then on line six, this would really be the first console.log that we actually print out. So here they print out how many. Remember that a function right now is being stored inside of a variable. Right now we're not actually calling the how many function. So if we just run line six, that should just print out like the function itself, which when we saw during lecture just gives us like some weird function notation. But the important thing is we're not gonna see 42. So if I focus my attention to just line six, this will just print out the function itself, which has some special notation. So let's give that a go, right? So we just see the function, how many. Then if we actually call the function on line seven, that means we're going into the function and we're gonna return 42 and we jump back to where we called the function. In other words, this call to how many now evaluates to 42. So this should just print out 42 as the second line. And then looking at the further lines, we do some similar stuff. Here they call the function again, but this time save the result or save the return value to a variable. So it's still the case that how many evaluates to 42, right? And then I just say 42 into the answer, and I just print out that answer again, right? So bear in mind, whenever you return a value, you can store it however you like and do any of those variable operations with it. So this should be the function, then 42, and then 42 again so far. Cool. And then from there, we have one more function to evaluate. So we have this entire function. Doesn't do much. It actually doesn't even have a return line, right? So this just says five. This is really just like a little bit of a trick question. And that means on line 15, when we call the how much function, we're trying to print out its return value because we're printing out the function call, but this function technically doesn't return anything, right? Although it says five, that doesn't mean it's going to return five. If you want to actually return data, you have to use the literal keyword return. And so when a function doesn't have a return line, by default, it's going to return undefined. Right, and there we see that last undefined, right? If you really wanted to see the value five, then you should have returned it. So we'll just try that for fun. Cool. We're gonna see undefined pop up in a few other places in JavaScript, and it's always going to be a matter of like a default value, just automatically appears. So let's go on to the third one over here. It's a little more involved. So looking at this one, we have a definition for average. And what it does is whenever we call it, it should console.log calculating. 
and then return the average of these two number arguments. And bear in mind that you know functions in general are written in a kind of general way. And so if we look at the function definition for average, we can't be certain yet what num1 and num2 contain as values, but we know that no matter what, we're going to take those two numbers, add them up, divide them by two, which in general is gonna give us the average of those two numbers. So if I look at my first console.log over here, it looks like I'm printing out the return value of five and 10, or finding the average of five and 10. Of course, though, when we call the average function, we would have to evaluate all the code inside. So I should see calculating, and then I'm going to return the average, and then I'll print out the actual average of five and 10, which would be like 7.5. So let's just try running up to that code. We'll see what we get. Right, so there I see calculating because that must happen first. And then I see 7.5 because that's the average of five and 10. Then we have some similar uh, examples over here, right? So if I bring in the second console.log, that will do the same thing. It should print calculating again because we have to call the function. So it's gonna print out calculating. Then it's going to return the average, which is 23 and print it out over here. Because remember, every function call, once it's done executing the code, will evaluate to its return value. So average 20 comma 26, will really evaluate to 23. So that should just print out 23. So let's do a quick check of that. So 7.5 and 23, awesome. And we keep rolling from here on line nine. Uh, what they do is find the average of 50 and 100, which we know is now going to be 75. So we're gonna print out uh, calculating again. But when it comes to the console.log on line nine itself, what this line will actually print is 75 plus two. So that should be a nice 77. And then from there, we have a few other lines of code looking at this last chunk of code. We just have some variables, so nothing fancy here. We know that the A variable is gonna contain 24. We know B is gonna contain 20. And when we take the average of 24 and 20, N should be 22. And then finally, we call average, and I just said that N was going to be 22, so it's technically just finding the average of 22 and 18, which should be back at 20. So let's give that a run, bring it to the original code. So our last console.log should just be 20. All right, nothing too difficult with that one. Let's go ahead on to the last snippet over here. So looking at snippet four, we have a function definition called exclaim. And what it does is just take in some string, looks like it turns it all uppercase, so we call it like capitalized. Then it returns that uppercase version of the string with two exclamation points at the end of it. But of course, nothing really executes until we call the function for the first time. So really the first line where I call the function is line seven. Uh, we create a variable called result and we assign to it the return value of exclaim, which means I must evaluate the right-hand side first. Remember that whenever we do a variable assignment, on the right-hand side of the equals, we look at that expression, we evaluate it, and then we take that result and store it into the left-hand variable name. So when we call exclaim, we're passing in potato as our string. So that means over here, when we jump inside of the function definition, capitalized contains uppercase potato. And then we just return potato with two exclamation points at the end of it. And that means from there, what we're really just saving is capital potato into the result variable. And on the next line, if we print that out, that's going to give us that string with exclamation points. All right, so there we see potato. And of course, result is truly just a string variable. So if I get the length of that string variable, it's just gonna give me the number of characters, which here looks like eight characters. Then again, like we just said, it's still a regular string, so you can do any other string operations like take an index of it. So if we say result at index zero, that just means the first character of my potato string, which is gonna be this capital P. So I'll run that. So I should get capital P, nice. And finally, using a pretty familiar pattern, we have this console.log that prints out result of result.length minus one. Remember that this is a general pattern. We know that in general, this will give us the last index or the last character of the result string. So I'll run that and that should be just an exclamation point. So when we have an expression like this, right, we evaluate it in pieces. Technically this is one long uh, index of a string. And so what we want to do is evaluate what the index is in particular, right? So between these square brackets, we must evaluate first. We already said that result.length is eight, right? That was from before. So I have eight over here, Then I'm just doing eight minus one, which is seven. We know that the character index seven is actually going to be the final exclamation point over here, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? The very last character uh, in general. So that wraps up part zero of this exercise. What I want you to do is really make sure you understand how we interpreted uh, all of these snippets because in the next part of the exercise, we're actually gonna write our own functions, right? So it's really important that you don't miss a step, right? In general, reading code is gonna be a little easier than writing it 
for yourself. And so make sure you have all of these explanations down and then we'll move on to part one.